with the new facelift, um, they also like it. So. The changes, not big changes to the actual look of the car. No, it's uh, on the front bumper and the rear bumper. And there are some new techni technical um, content and issues we have. It is an end of an era. St. Thomas' School has um, been on the site since uh, 1876. Um, and it's a, it's a brilliant little school, it really, really is. It is quite emotional actually because the, I mean the, the last time I'd have been through here on the, on the train would have been in 1968 with the, with the family, yeah, yeah. My, my boss, my CEO, his name is Larry Pimentel, uh, he's the, the boss of Azamara Club Cruises and uh, it, this was his idea uh, just to send the ship with me to the Isle of Man. On, it, we picked up our maiden voyage, we've had a plaque ceremony, the first plaque on board the ship was from Douglas, wow. I, I couldn't be more proud. So this is a scene on Howe Road in Oncombe where obviously a car has come in conclusion with a tram. It happened around two o'clock this afternoon. It appears from what uh, Iris has been telling us that the uh, car just seemed to keep going and the tram was uh, clearly well across the junction when the collision happened. What's changed is the weather forecast. Now to begin with it was just a glorious TT, the weather was good. Now we're looking at a one in 20 years event. We've got about 17 or 18 cars out today, which uh, is um, a, a really good gathering. Um, and we're these going, are Manx people. Are this they? is all. Yeah, this is uh, Porsche, Manx, Porsche Club GB Region 30. So uh -huh. uh, we have our own little uh, region on the on the island. We spent a good year looking for for sites um, that, that were acceptable and, and that we think would work. And luckily, we we got in touch with Mike Priest, who owns the Glen Helen Pub, and we secured a lease on the site and. Here we are today. I think uh, that we campaigned hard to get the Act in place and it was successful and I think it's been proven to be successful in, in the last two years it's been in operation. There's certainly been an awful lot recently that has been, as I believe, um, virgin on defamatory or um, it, it's perhaps politically motivated it, it seems. But basically, the Manx Bard is a resurrection of what happened m many years ago, and it's been going for some time, the modern Bard has been going for some time. But it's a way of promoting the Isle of Man, all that's good about the Isle of Man, but doing it in a slightly different way and doing it largely through poetry. You know, we're, we're really passionate about the, about the bike and it's, uh, it's quite hard to let it go, but it's, it, it's so fantastic that it's going to be here. You know, it was built to to compete here and to be successful here and it's certainly done that and to think that it's just going to reside here is perfect. So this is Douglas Promenade at the very last day of August 2018 and it's quite a sad sight really isn't it for lots of people to see the Imperial Hotel finally coming down. This has been quite a long procedure. The road itself, the drives have been shut off for months uh, then there's been hold-ups because it's in an, a conservation area but uh, it's been taking a few weeks but suddenly in the last day or two and especially today the last day of August suddenly the sign's gone from the front and this is really it. To, to be perfectly honest Paul I'm very sad. I I'm sad at the fact that all of this has been shrouded in mystery. I don't believe that it inspires great confidence for the people on the Isle of Man who actually care for the building and for its future. Uh, that what we're dealing with is something different from what we've seen for the past decade. The, the rally was due to start within 10 days. We still had an uncertainty over the granting of the road closure order. We were constantly putting in revisions to our safety plan and we were getting more and more requests to make different changes. Uh, we are very pleased to say that uh, Isle of Man Creamery is going to be the first dairy in the entire British Isles who will be using uh, plant-based cartons which are 100% sustainable and renewable. What we bring to the table as an island is obviously the tax incentives that every business on the island gets, but actually a lot of personal decisions go into where people base their companies and base their media. It's like everything else. People want to enjoy where they live, they want good restaurants, they want good education, they want a safe environment. The Isle of Man has all those things. Today is the exact day. Uh, we maintain our position in the Guinness Book of Records with the oldest trams on the oldest tramway in the world. Um, in terms of the original trams um, and today 125 years ago exactly the first tram ran 
to grab one. Well, here we are. It's the 17th of September 2018, a day that many people probably not thought would actually happen, that the work is starting on Douglas Promenade. I think the Isle of Man is a very wealthy nation in world terms and we've had a really good tradition of stepping up to the plate in terms of our international obligations. Well here we are, it's five years since that dreaded day up at the Mount Murray Hotel that it's reopened. It's now called the Kermis Hotel and a golf resort. Here are the, here the shots inside of the areas that are open at the moment. This is obviously the, where the main conference centre, which the Isle of Man's obviously probably missing a lot, having that space that's uh, back in use. So it's finally been announced that the Isle of Man hosepipe ban is being rescinded. It was back on the 3rd of August that it came into effect, much to the surprise of some, as in the end rain did start to come down. But there's a lot of questions to be asked about what is going to happen here in future if we get more hot, dry spells like we've had in 2018. Gentlemanly, dapper, hipster sort of fashion style to, to raise money and awareness for, for, the, for the good causes that uh, our charitable donations are going towards. This is a significant point. Uh, we've got uh, the steel going off the island this week with a bit of luck and it will be galvanised, I hope, within a very short period of time. I've asked for a, a quick turnaround and then we'll get it back to here so that we can start painting it. I think part of the point of today is to show that the hype is real, it's coming, it's really here. Time frame, I know some of the UK operators are talking about next year and others a lot more the following year for us. It's a function of many things. Were you disappointed that you made loss again? Uh, no, not, not at all, in as much as we reduced the loss by more than 50%. What is happening is in line with the, what the original press release stated and what I have stated in the media interviews, which is we will need to suspend the private patient's ward for 12 to 18 months while we rejig it, we refurbish it, we rebrand it and we relaunch it. We've given the licence to uh, Crogger, which is a local firm, to now go that uh, to, to explore and to see if there's something down there. Um, and, um, you know, this is the licensing bid that we started back a couple of years ago. It was actually Department of Economic yeah. Development at the time. Uh, that process is completed now. They will now take this forward and we'll see what will we'll see what will happen. But if, if you have one of those fault divorces, you can achieve the divorce in weeks rather than months or years. If you agree, if you both want an amicable divorce, you, you can wait two years. And if, if one party doesn't agree, it's a five-year separation. Clocks have changed. Um, the, the, the weather's about to deteriorate, you know, in the typical good old Manx style that it does. And we just want to make sure now that at this time of the year that everybody's giving that little bit of extra attention to their vehicles, making sure that the, the bulbs are working and that the, the tyre pressures are correct and that the treads are, are safe as well. I suppose the main part of the report deals with the relationship that the Ireland government have with the BBC. What the members of the report accepted was that there is a widespread feeling that Isle of Man taxpayers, the people who live on this island, are paying twice for public service broadcasting. We mustn't any of us assume that that makes crashing out of the EU next March with no deal inevitable. This report and its recommendations will change Manx Radio so fundamentally we believe it will cease to exist. I've, I've kind of read in, like little inklings to tell me that the report is due to go, to go to the Chief Minister soon. The fact that the government collects the money and then says this is what we will give for public media, public broadcasting, isn't unusual. What is unusual, and what is very unusual, is to see a line in a document coming out of a parliament which says, although in principle a public service broadcaster should be operationally independent of government, the arm's length approach of, in this case, the Treasury, has not worked. What I can say is, you know, through the process and the beginning of the process, the Chief Minister has promised that there will be a report uh, due for publication in December and I would expect that deadline still to be met. Uh, the fundamental uh, reason behind it is better service for our customers and hopefully a way of making our service more efficient. The building was in very poor condition, there were two main problems, uh, the steel beams across what was the front of the building, which are now gone, 
um, were in very badly corroded. I think a combination of the sea air and age uh, has got to them really. Uh, and they're in particularly bad condition. And now that we've removed them, uh, you can see how bad they really are. So obviously when this came available, I thought, do it indoors. We don't have to worry. It can rain, gale force, wind, snow, and it's not going to stop us. So. Um, we're heading from here shortly, uh, down through Douglas, along the promenade up to Onken. Uh, we're going to form up again in Onken and back along the prom, out over the Harbour Bridge. Uh, and then we're heading south to Castletown, um, tootle through the square in Castletown. Um, back up then to the hospital, uh, we're going to go past, uh, have a slow ride past the hospice uh, and then we're going to end up back here. The beauty of this building is you've got four floors so we can kind of tailor it to fit each different market that we're trying to appeal to. So downstairs will be sort of casual dining, classic British food, a little bit of Mediterranean influence, very, very well priced. I want to I wanna do the numbers so we're going to make sure the pricing is correct but with fabulous food. So were you happy that you, there was that sort of underlying support? Well, one of the people who doesn't support Manx Radio, of course, is you. The CWU have, have just not moved on anything. So, um, obviously, that's why the strike is on today, which we're really disappointed about. But we're going to continue with talks today to see if we can come to a satisfactory conclusion. Before the Christmas holiday um, period, it was really important to get the message out to the members of the Isle of Man public that, you know, we have been planning for a no-deal scenario for, for a while. Well, they resurfaced it about three months ago. I think about three months ago, don't yeah. quote me on it, but about three months ago. And then, now, they've dug it back up. My thoughts were, well, OK, forget focusing on Max Radio because um, the future of public service media is not really looking like an FM radio station on a hill. And that's, you know, I say that without meaning to denigrate Max Radio because you know, it's an important institution and it's always been part of our culture 